All right, so I decided to keep this uh, kind of short and sweet. It's actually just two slides and really one slide of information and then a table on the next one. Uh, but this is where it gets a little difficult. So uh, these are all the enzymes involved. So I wanted to go through and talk about these on a, on a separate um, little video here. Uh, so if, first of all, if you don't know the answer, your, your best guess would be DNA polymerase. Um, that is kind of the major enzyme that runs everything. And that's the enzyme used to build. Now, now we polymerase is because there are multiple different uh, ones. We're going to talk about polymerase one and three today, but um, no, there, I think there's 11 of them uh, that we've discovered now. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so I just want you to realize that that is kind of the one that, that is the driving force of um, what's going on. And then we have some other ones that are at maybe as important, I suppose, uh, because without the enzyme that wouldn't work. Um, but we want you to know what each one of these do. So we'll start with polymerases again. Uh, DNA polymerase three is the one that's actually um, bringing in the new nucleotides, both on the leading and lagging strands. So this is the one that's attaching it to the three prime end. Um, they've timed it, it runs about 50 nucleotides per second. So very, very quick. Um, and then DNA polymerase one is used in bacteria, and that's why it was first discovered in bacteria. That's why it's called number one. And on the lagging strand to replace the RNA primer. So what has to happen, uh, remember, is when we're doing the lagging strand, or even on the leading uh, strand, but on the lagging strand, we have these primers um, that are sticking there, and they can't be used. Uh, so they need to be removed. And so it is the DNA polymerase one that will go back in and take out the pieces of RNA and replace it with DNA. All right, before any of that can happen though, something has to happen to the molecule itself. Remember it is a double helix and it will not replicate itself if it's all twisted. So helicase is actually the, um, the enzyme that is uh, used to untwist it. So helicase actually untwists the DNA molecule. Um, single uh, strand binding protein is a protein, obviously, all, all these are. Um, but, but here's your other problem. So you have this unzipping, unzipping happening. Now, when it unzips, what's going to happen is you still have A and T is pulled apart. Now, these are still attracted to each other. So they want to just bond back together. But you need to keep, keep them apart long enough for new um, nucleotides to be brought in. And that's what single strand binding protein does. It actually holds the two strands apart so new nucleotides can be brought in. Okay, topoisomerase. A um, little bit harder for this one to, to describe it and, and maybe they do a better, better in the table. Um, so we'll go over here and here it is, relieves unwinding strain ahead of replication force by breaking, swiveling, and rejoining DNA strands. Um, you know, I'm not sure that helps a lot. Okay, so you wanna think about it. Uh, and I, I, I like to think of it this way. Let's say I, I, I hand you a hose that's not all knotted up, uh, or we have two hoses all knotted together. And, I, and I'm telling you that you have to unknot them. Um, the problem is everybody in the class has to have their two hands and kind of hold on to the, uh, the hose and work their magic on their one part. Now, remember, this thing is opening in 100 different spots. So it's all trying to untwist and do all this stuff. And what happens is anything that maybe one person is doing in the middle to untwist their area might be making it harder for the person next to them, because why they're untwisting, it's twisting on the other side. Well, for DNA, what it's done to figure that out is if we put it like this, so these are uh, the, the backbones. This is the phospho sugar backbones, the covalent bonds. Well, what can happen is if you start getting this pressure on it, uh, topoisomerase will come in, break the bond, let this thing swing around and then reattach itself. And by doing that, it actually eases the pressure on the molecule. So it doesn't get all twisty. All right. And then the last one is ligase. And ligase is the one that comes in and attaches any breaks in the covalent bond. So uh, ligase will fix uh, when topo isomerase goes in there, ligase will come in and um, actually fix uh, where 
Um, the primer has been replaced by um, DNA polymerase one. Um, once you get the new DNA there, there's a little nick or break. And so ligase goes in and, and re-bonds re all those different bonds. Okay, and so there you go. Uh, and also, yeah, so the fragments have to be bonded also. So those are your enzymes.